Hello everybody, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music, and today we are going to continue our beginner guitar lesson series using Mel Bay's Modern Guitar Method, Grade 1. Okay, so for today's lesson we are going to be looking at page 42. And as we get close to the end of the book, uh, there aren't too many new concepts that we're going to learn. We're just going to be learning more and more music with the concepts that we have already discussed in previous lessons. So what we're going to be doing is just kind of going through these exercises as we have done, breaking them down, helping you to be successful as you uh, go through these. So let's get started. The first exercise on page 42 is called Morning Song, and it's in the key of E minor as we've been working for the, the past couple lessons. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a try. So we're going to go ahead and start here with our metronome on 72. And I'll show you what morning song is about. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, so this exercise is really not too challenging. I think the thing that it's really trying to highlight here is the use of your D chord fingering, okay? Now, the book has had several exercises where it's kind of alluded to this fingering, but this is the first one where it really kind of identifies it and even labels it above and says, hey, play a D chord. We've used a lot of the D7 but not so much of just a D major chord. So the D major chord is, is very similar to the D7 chord, although your fingers are gonna kind of be flip-flopped a little bit. So what we have here is we have our open D, which will be open. We have an A that we'll play here with our first finger on the second fret of the third string. We have a D here, which will play third finger, third fret of the second string. And then we have the F sharp up here on top, which we'll play with our second finger, second fret, first string. And that's our D chord. Now you'll see this used playing the melody in the second to last measure. You'll see it in the chords uh, symbols above throughout. So if you were going to be like playing chords along with this melody or something like that, that D chord would be used before that. Um, but yeah, in that second to last measure. So really, I mean, as you go through, there's really nothing to it other than just playing the notes down. Quite a bit of fourth finger going on in there because there's several F sharps, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Moving on to the second line. Fourth finger again. That first chord stack is all open strings, and then you've got your D chord. And now for me, this little eighth note from the G to the E, I like to play that G with my fourth finger because I'm already using my all my fingers for that D chord, so I just D chord, and then I use my fourth finger to play the G. And then another D chord. And then a quick shift down to E minor. And there you have it. Really nothing to it. Let's go ahead and bump this metronome up a little bit. We're not gonna go all the way to 120. Uh, I don't think that's really, I don't know, in my opinion, this song is more geared to play it where we just did. But let's try it at 100. You can hear it a little bit faster. One, two, one, two, three. And 
And there you have it. So that is a morning song at 100. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next exercise here. It is called Cindy. And this one, uh, on the other hand, will be played relatively fast, maybe even and faster than what we've done with a lot of the songs that we've done. But let's kind of break it down first. We'll start with the metronome at 72, like we've done in the past. And it's going to feel pretty slow for this for this song. You might recognize the melody. Okay, so here is Cindy at 72 on the metronome. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. All right, so there it is. Now this one really also is not too challenging. There are just a, a couple things that might be helpful to you as you move through. Okay, so looking right at the beginning, we have uh, just some melody notes that are happening. They're kind of, it's kind of a bass melody, right? It's all happening down in the lower three strings. Now for me, as soon as I hit that half note, G, I'm just basically just instantly setting up my G chord because I'm going to strum that G chord in the next beat and I know that it's coming, so just... Right? And that'll help. So just kind of be planning ahead and making sure you just set up that G chord in time. And, and really, this is kind of a, a thing. So... When I play that, I don't necessarily like when I hit, say I hit the G and I'm setting up the G chord. It's not like an instant everything G chord. I kind of hit the G and then while it's ringing, I set the rest of the notes for the G chord. So. And that's a really common thing that, that I do a lot in my playing, especially when there's a lot of moves that are happening. Sometimes you have to take advantage of the time that you have, right? I have that whole beat of G that's playing before I have to have the rest of the G chord ready. So I kind of utilize that time, set the G as the anchor, and then I set the rest of the fingers. It's an option. You obviously could set all the fingers at once on that G just to be ready for the G chord. Either way would be fine. And then moving on. Same thing. I hit the A and then I set the D7 chord. This is the same as the beginning. Half note. Good. Now here... It's the same kind of thing except for you're using the C chord. I don't I'm not going to set the low C. I don't necessarily have to. You can, but I'm not playing anything down that low. So I'm just going to play my E with my second finger and then just set my C up here with my first finger. Basically the top half of the C chord. Okay, so when you get to this G chord, you you can kind of go either way. I When I played it in the example before, I set the whole G chord. And for me, I like that better, even though I'm only playing really the top half of the chord. But as soon as you move into the first measure of the third line, you play that low B, so you're really... You can still just keep that whole G chord set if you'd like. You don't have to, 
but that's kind of what I like to do. So this is starting at the fourth measure of the second line. I'm going to kind of play through that so you can see. Starting on the C chord. <laughs> See what I did there? I kind of set that G chord and I just left it for those whole two measures, for the last measure of the second line and the first measure of the third line. And then moving into the second measure of the third line, again, we have the C chord. Again, nothing out of the ordinary on this one. It's really not a very challenging exercise. The thing about this one is that you can take it much faster, okay? So let's jump it up to 120 and see what it sounds like there, but we'll actually take an example even faster and we'll talk about a concept. So here it is at 120 on the metronome. One, two, oh, one, two, three. <laughs> So there it is at 120. So let's talk about a concept here really quick. Now this song can go much faster. I mean... I mean, that's kind of where I feel this melody. But let's talk about that. It gets a little funny when you start putting your metronome really high, right? Like I can... I mean, literally, do, 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 do. for this old <laughs> kind of handheld metronome, uh, that's literally as fast as this metronome goes is 208. So what do you do at that point? For me, I tend to like to move my metronome uh, to half notes, okay? And this is kind of the same concept of what we would call cut time. Now, this is not written in cut time, but cut time symbol looks like this. It looks like a common time symbol with just a vertical line through it. And essentially what that means is that the music is going to be written like it's in 4-4 time, but you're going to play it twice as fast, so you're going to fill the beat in half notes rather than in quarter notes. And that might seem super confusing, but let's break this down really quick. So I'm going to jump the metronome to 100. So here's 100. Now, if the beat is quarter notes to bum 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 then we would play it this fast one two three right about where we were just playing it now if i was going to feel this beat as half notes one two bum 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 Bump, 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 bump. Kind of think like you would normally think eighth notes, like one and two and three and four and, and that speed is what your quarter note is going to be, right? Bump, 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 bump. You're essentially just playing it twice as fast. It would be as if you had the metronome at two hundred. Bump, 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 bump. When I start to play things really fast, I like to set the metronome this way. That way the beats on the metronome are just like flying really, really fast. It's easier for me, and I think it's better for me to internalize the time this way anyway. So here it is. Here's the metronome at 100, uh, but we're going to be playing it as if it's in cut time. So really the quarter note is 200 beats per minute. So here we go. Here is Cindy in cut time at 100 beats per minute on the metronome. One, two, one, two, a one, two, three.
Nice. For me, I think that that's like kind of the goal tempo for this tune, and it's it's more fun to play right there anyway. So I would really practice on bumping that tempo up until you can play it kind of at a quicker clip like that. So cool, that that is Cindy. Let's go ahead and take move ahead and take a look here at Night Song. Now this one is definitely the most challenging of the three on the page. We're going to play it at 72, and then we're going to do a really thorough breakdown so you can kind of see what this is all about. It can go a little bit faster than 72, but I think 72 works just fine for this, and it'll be a good point for us to start and talk about it. So here it is at 72 on the metronome. One, two, three, one, ready and play. And there we go. That retard. I tried to to accentuate that retard at the end. It's really hard to do while the metronome is going, um, but but that's the idea. That being said, I feel like this exercise, it, it there is definitely value in practicing it with the metronome, but it also is very useful to practice without the metronome. So uh, for me, I feel like there's so much musicality that can take place within this one with being able to kind of stretch the time a little bit. Right? Just like really kind of being able to be free a little bit and feel that. And that'll make that, that retard at the end just a little more natural. Yeah, very nice. Okay. So this one is definitely the most challenging on the page. Let's just kind of talk through it and, and see what's kind of going on here, okay? So starting in the first measure, we have that E minor chord. Now we have a lot of these quasi arpies that are happening, the squiggly lines on the side, which are saying like, kind of like milk those chords. It's not like a, it's, but you have to be a little bit careful because you only have one beat, right? You can't like, you can't milk it too much or you're gonna get too far out of time, but just kind of strum nice and smoothly and slowly on, on each of those that you see. So. so that's all just an E minor chord in that first measure. Set up your regular E minor and you can take care of all of that. And then we go into this, it's labeled it an A minor, which is true. So you've got your A and C. 
but it's only for one beat, so I'm just going to play A and C. I'm not going to set up a whole A minor chord. Then you've got your G and B, and then you move into your B7. Okay, so for me, the, the B7 situation in this one is really what makes it challenging. It's uh, We've learned B7, but it's kind of a new shape. We're getting used to it. And for me in this song, there are times when I'm going to set up the whole B7 chord. And there are times when I'm going to set up the B7 chord, but without the pinky. Okay? Now, in this third measure, I'm going to set up the whole chord because... I strum those first three notes, and then I have that F sharp up on top. So you might as well just set up the whole B7 chord. So starting in the second measure, it looks like this. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually setting up the bottom half of the chord, and then adding the F sharp. Again, we talked about that a little bit uh, in Cindy, the previous exercise hitting a note, and then setting up the rest of the chord. I do that a lot in this. So, again, second measure. Good, and then we have a little A minor thing. We have an E and an A. We'll play together. And then for the next chord stack, you're just going to take the A off to play that E and G together. Then you have a rest. Boom, and then it's basically the same. That's all essentially the same as the first two measures, except for that last note is an octave higher. Then moving into the second line, we have a C chord. Okay, so what I do there is I set up the C chord, but not your first finger, not that high C, because I'm going to use that first finger to play the A. I kind of sneak it in. So that's how I like to do that. Now, your other option, there's, there's another option there, is to go and move and play the A with your second finger. To me, I don't like that option as much. It adds an extra move, right? You have to do that skip move to get the A, and then do another skip move to get to the B7. So for me, I prefer to play low C, then you've got your E and G together, just drop your first finger to play the A, and then it says the total finger reset for the B7, which you were going to have to do anyway. So... I'll do that again so you can see. Right. So yeah, when you hit that B7, it's just, I'm just doing the lower half. I'm not worrying about that high F sharp because you don't need it. And then you're back to the beginning. This is all repeated. And then we move into the second ending here so we've got again I'm just playing the lower half of the B7 chord really you could even leave out the low B for me I just that shape is easy to get to that lower half of the B7 so I just put the whole thing on I'm just not playing the high F sharp because you don't need it and that second ending you can just leave that shape for the whole thing play the A and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my first finger here and just move it up one string and take everything else off. And then I'm set, right? Now, you might just practice that move a couple times if you need to. So you got your the lower half of your B7, and then you just move that first finger, and you have your G sharp and B. So this is the fourth measure of the second line. You've got G sharp and B. Moving to the next measure, you've got your C and E. 
B and D, which we've done a lot of, right? You can play it with your first and second finger, which is mostly what we've been doing. So that's what I did in the thing. Again, that could be played with your third and fourth finger, your second and third finger. I like first and second finger because you're already using your first finger on the B string. So all I have to do is slide up two frets and slide back down. That makes a lot of sense to me. It's just a real simple slide and shift. So this is the fifth measure of the second line. And then the last measure here of the second line. Okay, so you've got your B, A, F, A. We're just gonna kind of leave those fingers in place as they come. And then we've got this E7 thing, so G sharp, B, E. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that first finger down. And it doesn't really notate to do that, but I'm just gonna leave it down, add the fourth finger, and then, cause you need them both together for this very next beat. So in the first measure of the third line, and then I'm gonna add my second finger down. So I've got this kind of funky shape going on here. I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, so let me play that for you nice and slow. So this is the last measure of the second line and the first measure of the third line. So we have. Okay, so we basically have three shapes that are taking place there. The first shape being this kind of D minor shape, which is your A on the second fret and your F natural on the first fret of the first string, right? You've got this kind of D minor thing. There's your first shape. And then you move into this E7 shape, which is your G sharp with your first finger and your D with your fourth finger. Right? And then your last shape is just a variation of that, which you're just dropping your second finger down on your mid-range E down here on the D string. So again, three shapes. There's your second shape. And then coming out of it, it moves into that A minor shape. So that's what that is. It's not too challenging. It's just kind of a matter of kind of working through those fingerings there. And then moving into the second measure of the third line, that's just A and C together. Back to B7, I'm just playing the lower half of it. And that's all just the lower half of the B7 chord. Right? Nothing fancy, you just kind of leave fingers down as they come in that measure. And the last measure of the third line is just E minor. This is all like the beginning. Exactly like the beginning. And then the fifth, fourth measure of the fourth line. Got this E7 shape thing happen again. And then we've got E minor 7. So really in those last two measures, the E minor 7 thing is, is basically just open. Because you've got D, G, You move into your full B7 chord and in your full E minor chord. Yeah, I mean, that's really all there is to it. Um, again, I think the, the biggest challenge is some of these skips in and out of this B7 chord are kind of what make, make this one what it is. So just kind of spend some time on that shape, making sure that you're happy 
that that's happening smoothly. Beyond that, I think the other most challenging part is that spot that we focused on, which is the last measure of the second line and the first measure of the third line. Just take that super slow and... Because once you get those shapes down, it actually flows off the fingers really pretty well. It's just a matter of getting getting that happening. So, All right, so that's our lesson for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already checked out my website at www.nicktolmanmusic.com, please do so. If you have any questions or concerns about today's lesson, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you answer those questions. If you haven't checked me out on Facebook, I'm there. Nick Tolman Music, search for me and, and give it a like, and uh, I'd be more than happy to connect with you in that way as well. Thank you so again for tuning in today, and we will catch you next time.